What's a NAS? Well, a NAS is a network attached storage. Essentially, a piece of tech with a whole bunch of hard drives inside of it. And it can be a little bit daunting, firstly, around what sort of NAS should you be buying? Do you need a NAS for home? Well, firstly, the answer for that is yes. You know, there's people that have got data in so many spots and USB drives and computers in everywhere. Stick it all on a NAS, share it on your network, and then every single device on your network can easily access it. But there's a few things that people don't think about before they buy a NAS, because a NAS is gonna be something that's gonna be for a little while, right? Sometimes you buy you know, maybe you buy a loaf of bread. That loaf of bread, in the next week, you've probably eaten it. Well, a NAS, you're gonna buy it. It's not gonna be gone next week. You're probably gonna have it for five years. You wanna make sure that you're buying the NAS that is not just for today, but is also for the future. You wanna make sure that the NAS has enough capacity, performs well enough, that it has the grunt, the power necessary to be able to do what you want it to do. This is Tech with Emilio. We release videos every single week on all things tech. And you're probably not subscribed, so why don't you smash that button? Well, don't, don't smash the button. Click on it with your mouse or with your finger, depending on what device you're on. Click on the bell so you don't miss out on anything as well. Now. NAS devices. They come in all shapes, in all sizes. They come small, they come medium, they come large, and they come really, really large. I mean, if you're working in a company that has terabytes and terabytes, petabytes of data, you need a lot of storage space for this. So it's not uncommon for companies that literally have petabytes worth of data to have very, very big versions of NAS devices. Or they have a combination of like a NAS and a SAN, a SAN being a storage area network, a NAS being a network attached storage. There's, there's differences between the two. Essentially a NAS is a little bit more file based, does your SMB shares, your NFS shares, things like that. A SAN is block based, so you're gonna be using iSCSI, you're going to be using fiber channel, and there's sorts of different technologies available for a SAN. We can talk about SAN on another day. You can search my video archives. We've got some good videos around the differences between a SAN and a NAS if you are interested, but that is not the point of this video. Now I've got a few NASs that I wanna to talk to you about. I've got three main brands that we'll be highlighting today. They are Synology, Asus Tor, and also Terra Master. And then there's others, right? There's QNAP, NetApp, there's also Dell EMC, there's Netgear, there's other brands out there, but they're the three that we're gonna be talking about in this video. And you'll see straight off the bat, that I've got my Terra Master, which is a two bay NAS. This one has two slots, which means I can put two hard drives inside of it. This thing is great. It is powerful, but it's also very, very reasonably priced. We then got the Asus Store, and this one is a four bay NAS. A little bit bigger, you can put four hard drives into this. And then I've got my Synology NAS, and this one is the biggest of these three. Now I'm just gonna make a note that these three do come in different shapes and different configurations. So all of these three brands, you can get them with more hard drives or less hard drives, right? There's different options available. I'm gonna link down below in the description for all of these three, so you can go and check them out yourself and uh, let us know which one you wanna get. We'll also show you the rack-based versions of these NASs, which are gonna be a lot bigger, a lot more capacity, but they're a little bit more enterprisey. So what are three mistakes that people commonly make when they buy a NAS? Let me tell you a story. My first NAS that I bought was a Netgear NAS. I love this NAS. It was a four bay NAS and I pumped it full of one terabyte hard drives and I was so proud of myself. I built up my RAID group, I was all good to go. I did it in a RAID 5 and then I got an incredible three terabytes worth of storage available for me to use. Have a guess what happened. I ran out of space. I didn't plan for it. Also, I wanted to run some applications onto it. I was not able to run Plex onto this thing. I was not able to run it and host a website onto it. It just did not have the grunt, the power. And then six months down the track, I was like, why did I get this NAS? I've already spent the money. I didn't future plan it. So very, very often, a lot of people underestimate the storage requirements. They underestimate scalability. What is this thing gonna look like down the track? When you are planning for your NAS, get a NAS that is not enough capacity just for now. So you have to think about all of the storage that you've got. You know, you've got all these hard drives sitting around your house and maybe they all total up to four terabytes worth of data. Don't go and buy a NAS and stick it full of hard drives that is just for four terabytes because 
Yes, you're gonna fill it up straight away. Don't even make it six terabytes. I always recommend make it double, maybe even triple the size. Think about the future. Think about what you've got right now. And then in the next year, you're probably gonna have a lot more data. In the next five years, you're gonna have a lot more data. So always future plan and scale out how much storage you need. So whether that is gonna be a two bay, a four bay, or an eight bay NAS, always think about the future. One thing you've got to think about is that you can put different hard drives inside, different capacity hard drives inside of these NASs. So something like this two bay TerraMaster, sleek silver design, you can open this thing up and put in a 10 terabyte hard drive or two 10 terabyte hard drives, but that may be more than enough for you. The nice thing about this little TerraMaster is that you've got a full operating system running onto it, You've got like an app store. And in that app store, you can go and download and install applications directly on your NAS. I know, install applications on your NAS. Essentially your NAS, in a way, acts a little bit like a server. So that's the nice thing about something that is tiny like this, because you get all of the benefits of these more expensive, larger NAS devices, but in a much smaller form factor. So plan and plan and plan what the capacity requirements for your NAS need to be. The next thing that is very, very overlooked is the performance of your NAS. Not all NASs are created equal. It looks like the same thing. It looks like it just has some hard drives. I just stick some hard drives and there we go, it's done. And I can access it on the network. Well, yes, but some NASs have better CPU. Like inside of them, it's actually like a computer. So it has a CPU, it has RAM, and some of them are more powerful than others. Some of them have a much better graphics card than others. How fast a thing performs is dependent on the performance of the NAS, the bits, the hardware that's inside of that NAS. We talked about some applications, right? All of these have their own operating system and they have their own app store where you can install applications. You can even have multiple applications running at the same time more applications running at the same time, the more powerful the NAS is. A lot of this comes back to future planning, right? We talked about that in the first point, that some people do not think about what is this thing gonna look like in the future. You may be wanting to buy a NAS right now because you just need a space to put all of your data, and that may be fine. But then you're gonna start playing with the NAS and you're gonna realize, wow, I can do more than just storing data. I can actually deploy my own website right onto here. I could maybe host all of my home movies. I've gone off on a holiday somewhere. I've gone on an overseas trip, put all of that stuff on my NAS, install Plex onto it, and then from my TV or from my smartphone, I can stream all of that content directly onto my smartphone. Amazing. Running things like that will require some good resources on that NAS. So think about what you may wanna do. Now, if you want something even more grunty, here is a rack-based NAS, right? It's a super chunky piece of thing, but you're gonna get the ability to stick a lot more hard drives into it. But also, it's running a much better graphics card. It's running a lot more RAM. So it's gonna be a lot more powerful. If you want something a little bit better for your home office or for your small business, then you may wanna look at considering something that is a little bit more enterprisey. But of course, with something like this, you need to find the space for it because this is not gonna be able to just sit on your desk. It's not a desktop type of NAS, right? Like these other ones that we've looked at. This is now a rack-based NAS. So ideally, needs to be put inside of a rack cabinet. Something that is this size is also gonna be a little bit more noisy. There's a lot more fans. So when you turn it on, it's gonna sound a little bit like a jet engine. So you have gotta consider the noise. You've also gotta consider that it's gonna be running hotter and it's also gonna be costing you more in electricity. It's not for everybody, but it is an option for you if you want something that is a lot more scalable and is gonna be performing a heck of a lot better. I recommend doing some research of your NAS before you even go and buy it to understand what features you could have on your NAS because you may be surprised that when you get it, you realize that the NAS can do a lot more than what you expected and then you're gonna regret buying one that was slightly slower. And then we've got RAID, 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 RAID. So many people do not think about the RAID configuration that they need to use, that they need to set up before they even buy a NAS. And then they buy a NAS thinking, oh great, I'm gonna stick two four terabyte hard drives inside of my two bay NAS here, 
and I'm gonna get eight terabytes out of it. Well, maybe, but the benefits of a NAS is that you also have redundancy. You have the ability that if one of your disks fails, you don't lose all of your data. So what happens is when you're setting up your NAS, you're configuring a RAID. You've got your JBOD, which just stands for just a bunch of disks, where you're just grabbing all the disks and they just sort of don't really do much. You've then got RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, and there are other sorts of RAIDs available also. Now, the RAID configuration really depends on lots of different factors. RAID 0, for example, has this thing called striping. And yes, the reality of getting an eight terabyte NAS, if you put two four terabytes, is possible with a RAID 0. But then what's gonna happen is if you lose one of those disks, you actually lose both of them. Pretty bad when you think about it. You've got two hard drives containing data. One of them dies, you lose both. You don't have any failover or redundancy. And of course, that's one of the great things about a NAS is that you can actually set up mirroring. So RAID 1 is now your mirroring. You're putting two four terabytes in there, but then only one of them is the live one with four terabytes. The other one has a duplicate. It's like a mirror of the other one. So regardless of one of the two disks failing, you don't actually lose anything. But what you do is you are sacrificing one of those disks because of the mirroring feature. But you're only gonna be allocated four terabytes of storage available for you to use. Then you can get a lot more fancy with RAID 5s and RAID 6s and RAID 10s. We have combinations of all of these things, but the whole point is that you're gonna be having redundancy built into your disk configuration. Go and do some research on the different RAID configurations, have a think about which one will work best for you, and then whatever hard drives you're gonna be buying for your NAS, consider that in your planning. So hopefully this helped you out, and if it did, why don't you like this video? And a lot of you are not subscribed, so why don't you subscribe as well? Click on the button on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next video as we continue talking about all things tech. We'll see you then.